Welcome back everyone. In this lecture, uh, we will define the universal enthalpic algebra and see some of its uh, properties. So, this notion of universal enthalpic algebra, it is very important uh, for the representation theory of the Lie algebras. So, let us actually uh, start defining and then I will give you motivation why these are important. So, let us start with the Lie algebra G. So, this is a Lie algebra. Again, it does not need to be finite dimensional, but if you are convenient, you can just assume to be finite dimensional. So, again, we will take the ground field to be complex numbers. So, recall, so Lie algebra to begin with, it is a vector space. So, in particularly, we can talk about tensor algebra uh, of this uh, G. So, let us denote it by Tg. So, this is uh, by definition. So, this is the direct sum of all the k tensors, so where k ranges from 0 to infinity. So, recall that T0 of T0 of G, G is nothing but the one dimensional space C and then T1 of G is just G. So, the kth tensors are nothing but you take all possible uh, span of k tensors, in particularly this is the as a vector space is the tensor product of all this g k times. So, now we have this uh, natural product on this space and that makes it actually uh, this T g associative algebra. Okay. So, this T g this is uh, associative C algebra. Indeed, if you think about it, it is generated by G. So, this is generated by G. What is the meaning of that? If I take T 1 G, so from this one can obtain all possible T k G. Okay? So, this is exactly the G. So, this actually generates T G as C algebra. Okay, that is more or less clear from the definition. So, now uh, let us recall the universal property of this uh, tensor algebra. So, like I said, it is indeed uh, free associative algebra generated by G. So, there are no relations that we impose on the basis of the G. So, that means uh, if we take, for example, any map okay, from G to some capital A, where capital A is C associative algebra with let us say unit 1 with unity 1. So, then given any C linear map, we can always extend that C linear map to T g. Okay. There is unique extension that we have. So, so, note that uh, G is isomorphic to T 1 G. So, there is a natural inclusion, uh, let us call it I. So, this is uh, the inclusion that we have from G to T G and that is indeed a C linear map. So, this is just a C linear map. So, now given a C linear map from G to A, we can always extend that map to T g to A as a C algebra map. Okay. So, this is the universal property. So, there exist extensions such that this diagram commutes. So, that means given theta there exists theta tilde. So, their theta tilde is the extension of theta. So, what is the meaning of that? So, that means theta tilde when you restrict. So, when you look at this composition theta tilde composed with this i, then you get back theta. So, that is the meaning of this theta tilde being the extension or this diagram being commuted. Commute. So, now this is always actually a case uh, for the tensor algebra. So, and the tensor algebra can be defined using this universal property. Okay. So, maybe I will leave it as exercise to prove this. So, what is the exercise? Given theta, 
from G to A, C linear map, there exist unique theta tilde which is from T G to A which is a C algebra map. So, that means it is a map from uh, map between associative algebras such that, so when you compose these maps you get back theta. Okay. So, this can be proved very easily uh, because uh, T g is generated by g that is what uh, we are going to use. Indeed, if you think about it theta tilde on any tensors let us call it x 1 tensor etcetera x k it will be defined as the product theta of x 1 etcetera theta of x k. So, that is the only way one can define because g generates uh, T g. So, now if you take this as definition and then you need to verify that this is well defined. Once you verify it is well defined, it is clear that it is a C linear map and this map indeed uh, is a unique extension of theta. So, now uh, we are going to actually define what is the universal enveloping algebra. But before that, uh, let us try to understand uh, what is enveloping algebra means. Okay. Uh, we are let us say in, in a situation that uh, G being finite dimensional algebra, we can also assume that G just being linearly algebra. So, that means G sits inside J L of V. And indeed, any finite dimensional Lie algebra over complex numbers can be embedded inside G L of V for some V that is called Ados theorem. But if you are in this uh, situation, then uh, we can actually have a very nice associative algebra that can be defined for this G. Okay. So, take this kind of scenario where G is sitting inside G L of V. So, now if you think about it, G L of V is nothing but set of all uh, linear maps from C to C endomorphism on V and this is indeed associative algebra. So, this also has this associative C algebra structure. So, if I take G and then if I consider it as element inside uh, subset inside this endomorphism of V. So, we can talk about uh, the associative subalgebra generated by G. So, this is the associative subalgebra generated by G inside this endomorphism of V. So, now what is the use of this associative subalgebra that actually generated by G? So, if you think about it, if you have some representation okay, that is actually, uh, so the where G acts on that. So, let us say G acts on, uh, one can even take uh, this V itself let us say because G sits inside G L of V, G naturally acts on capital V. So, now if you if you think about it, okay, so then the action of this G can definitely extend to the, the action of this subalgebra, associative subalgebra generated by G. So, this induces action on okay let's induces action on capital okay so now we are actually started with the representation of the lie algebra and then we ended up actually defining a representation of associative algebra. Now, one can actually use this dictionary to actually uh, uh, say something about this representation. For example, if we have some information about this associative algebra, how it acts. So, then using that information, one can get some information about how this Lie algebra acts on V. Okay. And if you think about it, this is in some sense associative algebra that is just containing G which is sitting inside J L of V which is generated by G. Okay. It is the smallest 
associative algebra that contains G. Okay. So, some information about the Lie algebra definitely can be translated to some information about this uh, associative algebra and vice versa. So, that is why at least about this particular representation, we can actually always uh, if we know some information about this particular representation capital V of this associative algebra generated by G, then we get the same information about that representation as representation of G. So, this correspondence in some sense very helpful. For example, if V is irreducible as representation of this associative algebra generated by G, then it must be irreducible as G module okay, that is easy to see. And similarly, the other concepts also one can actually try to see what happens. But there is a drawback in this construction. So, given G only if we know that it is embedded inside GL of V, then we have this enveloping algebra. Okay. So, I do not want to actually kind of give very precise definition of enveloping algebra, which will not we will not need it here, but you can easily see that the enveloping algebra is defined something like this, which is the subalgebra generated by G. So, then it motivates us to ask this natural question whether one can do universal construction that actually takes care of all representations. Okay. So, given G, okay, can we define? some universal associative algebra, of course, in some sense generated by G, again let us put it in the quote, such that what we want representations of G corresponds to representations of that associative algebra representations of G corresponds to representations of that associative algebra. Okay. So, this is the goal. So, indeed the universal enveloping algebra gives you answer for that. So, let us actually just define what it is. So, then uh, it becomes actually very easy to deal with it. Okay, so, what is the universal enveloping algebra? So, if you think about it, uh, we are interested in actually taking uh, associative algebra generated by G. Okay. So, the T G is also such algebra. Okay. This is also associative C algebra generated by G. But the thing is, this only actually sees the linear structure on G that is a vector space structure. Okay. So, T G sees only the vector space structure of G. So, we need some associative algebra which is universally constructed, so that it also sees the Lie algebra structure. Okay. So, that means whenever you take, okay, suppose if you think G as okay, sub set of whatever, let us call it U G. So, this is the universal enveloping algebra that uh, we denote it by U G. Okay. So, if it is G is viewed as subset of U G, then if I take X and Y inside G and then look at the, the same elements inside U G, then I can make this product X Y Y X whatever that is inside UG, I will be able to make. But then, 
if they are elements of G, then this x y minus y x naturally they corresponds to the bracket x y okay, inside the associative algebra u g. But there is a bracket that is already defined on g. So, we demand that this has to be same as that one defines inside g. Okay. Otherwise, there is no compatibility condition. So, in some sense, this is what motivates us to define the universal enveloping algebra as follows. So, let us actually just define So, we can just take let us call it I star. Okay. So, this is the two sided ideal generated by x tensor y minus y tensor x minus the bracket x y where x y comes from g. Okay. So, the already there is a product in T g. So, that is x y x tensor y and then we can talk about the difference x tensor y minus y tensor x. The problem is that may not be equal to the bracket x y because this is like a degree 2 element and this is degree 1 element okay, because this is coming from g. Okay. But in the universal MAP algebra in some sense we want that compatibility, we want them to be equal. So, then just go modulo this two sided ideal generated by this, then you get the universal MAP algebra. Then u g is defined to be T g modulo this i star. Okay. Now, once we actually define this, then you can easily see that the relations that we have defined, they are not graded relations. So, these relations or the ideal generated by whatever this generator, they are not graded. So, because they are not graded, so the u g is not a graded algebra, okay, that is easy to see. So, that implies this is not graded algebra, but there is this grading on t g. So, what that grading will do for u g? So, if you just take the image of that, that is going to give us actually what you call this filtered filtration on u g. So, one can prove that this is indeed filtered algebra. So, this is filtered algebra. So, how one can actually get the filtration? So, you can take this summation T r of g where r ranging from 0 to k and then if you take, so let us call the quotient map as pi. So, pi is the map from T g to u g. So, this is a surjective map and if you take this map and then look at the pi of this uh, filtered component inside your T g because T g is graded. So, that implies these uh, sums will form a filtration for T g. Then if you call this as u k g, then this will give you the filtration. So, what is the meaning of that? That means u 0 of g is contained in u 1 of g and so on and u k of g is contained in u k plus 1 of g. And not only that, this, fil this is called filtration if whenever you take u k of g times u k dash of g, that should lie inside u k k plus u power k plus k dash of g. Okay, so, that is why this is a filtration. This is a filtration of u g. So, u g becomes filtered algebra. So, there is a, a general construction once you have a filtered algebra, you can talk about associated graded algebra. Okay. Indeed, the point Birkhoff theorem uh, tell, talks about that graded algebra one can prove that that graded algebra is nothing but the symmetric algebra of G. 
So, we will actually uh, not write the PBW theorem in that form, but uh, that will become a corollary maybe I will actually state it at the end. But now let us actually look at this uh, uh, the universal linear algebra more closely. So, we have defined the universal linear algebra. So, now there is this natural question okay, whether it has any uh, universal property and of course, uh, there is some universal property. So, let me just state it here the universal property of this UG. So, what it is? So, if you think about it, it is a very uh, simple thing to modify. So, we can take the universal property of TG and then just simply modify. So, you take uh, capital A be again associative C algebra with uh, unit 1. Okay. Now, denote the bracket A to be the associated Lie algebra. Okay. Maybe Lie algebra of capital A. So, how the Lie bracket is defined? It is given by the commutator bracket. With the Lie bracket, the bracket A B is being A B minus B A for all A B in capital A. So, this is the data is given. Okay. So, now, so if you start with the Lie homomorphism, because we need to actually take that Lie algebra structure, if you have a Lie algebra homomorphism from G to the bracket A, which is as a set A. So, this is let us say theta, which is a Lie algebra homomorphism or the map. So, then there is a natural map iota from G to UG. So, what is iota? The iota is a is the inclusion composition with the quotient. Okay. So, you have a map from G to TG, which is the inclusion I, then TG to UG, you have the quotient map pi. So, if you compose them, then that map you call it iota. Okay. And it is clear that this iota is just a uh, is it is actually a linear map to begin with, but the way we define u g you can easily see that this iota is indeed a Lie algebra homomorphism. So, let us check that. So, what, a, what is the meaning of iota being Lie algebra homomorphism? Let us take iota of bracket x y for x y inside g. So, then we want to prove that this is same as bracket iota of x comma iota of y. Since the bracket x y where it will be mapped, okay, let us look at the bracket x y. So, you using the inclusion the bracket x y will go to the x bracket x y. Okay. So, the bracket x y mapped via i just to the bracket x y and then if you just take this pi then you can see that pi is actually algebra homomorphism. So, pi of the bracket x y. So, this is going to be exactly the bracket pi of x pi of y. Okay. So, now what is the bracket pi of x pi of y? So, that is same as okay. so you can take uh, because the pi is uh, nothing but algebra homomorphism. So, you can see that this is pi of x pi of y minus pi of y pi of x, okay. but that is exactly that uh, iota of iota of x bracket okay the bracket iota of x iota of y so this is indeed a lie algebra homomorphism so now uh, if you actually think about it given this theta so we can actually prove that there exist unique extension theta tilde such that this diagram commutes where theta tilde is indeed C algebra map. Okay. So, 
Okay. So, let me just write it here. So, given theta which is from G to the bracket A Lie algebra homomorphism, there exist theta tilde from U G to A which is C algebra homomorphism such that this diagram commutes. So, that can be written as so you take iota theta tilde the composition that should be equal to theta. So, this is what you get. Okay. So, let us see how one can prove this. So, this is just follows from the definition. Okay. So, given a map from G to the bracket A theta, note that uh, it is a linear map. So, you have this natural inclusion from G to T G. So, that means you have this natural extension. There exists theta tilde such that this actually commutes. Now, T G to U G you have this quotient map pi. So, now we want to see that once you prove that this theta tilde factors through pi then you are done. Okay. That means, you want to actually say that there exist actually again theta tilde same notation one can use such that this diagram commutes. Maybe we will use different notation theta dash such that this diagram commutes and this is immediate from the universal property of T g. Now, we want to check we have this theta tilde such that this diagram commutes. So, now using now chasing the diagram you can see that the bigger diagram will commute. Okay. But how theta tilde exists? To prove that theta tilde exists all we need to say that if I take the kernel pi. Okay, so, that actually should contain uh, this two sided ideal i star. Okay. So, that is what we need to verify. So, sorry not the kernel pi, the kernel pi is the i star. We want to say that uh, theta tilde actually factors through this pi, uh, this pi okay. theta, da, theta tilde factors through pi. So, that is what we need to verify. Okay. So, if you actually uh, think about it, uh, so what we need to verify. Okay. So, let us look at, so it will just boil down to, okay. so if I, if I take this theta dash of x tensor y minus y tensor x, let us take the bracket x y. Okay, let us compute what it is. So, this is going to be exactly theta of x theta of y because theta dash is the extension of theta. Then minus theta of y theta of x minus theta of bracket x y. But since theta is Lie algebra homomorphism, so this is going to be 0 as theta is a Lie algebra homomorphism. Okay. So, that means one can actually uh, see that the kernel of theta dash, okay, the kernel of theta dash contains i star. So, then we can see that this map theta dash actually not the theta tilde theta dash indeed factors through. Okay. So, that means we have this induced map theta tilde So, now we can define this theta tilde from 
u g to a as you can take x plus a star and then send it to theta dash of x plus a star. Okay. So, now this diagram commutes and already this diagram commutes, so entire diagram commutes. So, that proves the existence of theta tilde. So, now the uniqueness just follows from the fact that uh, the image of G under this iota is gener generating U G. Okay. The iota of G generates U G that is because i of g generates okay the copy of g inside tg generates tg and pi is being surjective map so the iota of g generates ug so that tells you that theta tilde must be unique because theta tilde is determined by theta okay if you have two maps whose restriction is theta then obviously because i of g generates them so they must agree on all the elements of ug that may be you can just check it directly. So, this proves that indeed uh, this uh, given theta you always have this extension theta tilde from e g t. So, now let us use this uh, to prove that the representations of g corresponds to representations of u g. Okay. So, representations of G corresponds to representations of G. So, what is the meaning of representation to begin with? To begin with representation means it is a map from G to G L of A. Okay. So, now given this map theta which is a Lie algebra homomorphism, Lie algebra map you can easily see that you have this iota which is from u g and then you can actually have this given theta there exists unique theta tilde such that this diagram commits. So, you can take theta and then send it to theta tilde because theta tilde is a C algebra map from u g to g l of e. So, that means it is a, it is a representation of u g. Okay. So, it is a C algebra map that means it is a representation of u g. So, this is the association that we can do. So, you start with theta and then send it to theta tilde. Now, if you take theta tilde which is a map from u g to let us say g l of v which is same as endomorphism of v. Okay. So, then how do you define theta? So, there is this natural map from G to U G which is the iota. So, you just compose this map then you will get map from G to G L of E. Since iota is a Lie algebra homomorphism, theta tilde is C algebra homomorphism, the composition will become Lie algebra homomorphism. So, that defines a representation. So, from theta tilde you can actually send basically theta tilde composition iota. So, that is the map that you are actually defining from G to G L of e. So, this way you establish actually one to one correspondence between representations of G to representations of U G. Now, I will leave it as exercise to think about it what irreducible, reducible, indecomposable representations corresponds. Okay. And it is easy to see that what they correspond in the category of representations of U G. Okay, I will stop here. Uh, we will continue with the property of uh, the universal Nepean algebra in the next class. Thank you.